Good morning, Dr. Chapel. Good morning. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. But we're truly blessed. So at this time we're gonna start our Sunday school lesson. If you want to just bow your head for a moment of prayer. Let's get as humble as you can. For dear and gracious Father, we come this morning saying thank you, Father God. Thank you for uh, this day and every day thus far, Lord, dear Lord. For allowing us to see it, dear Lord, and not only just see it, Father God, but be able to be in our right mind, Father God, clothed, be able to move our extremities, dear Lord. So we come this morning with thanksgiving our home for you truly worthy to be praised. We come saying thank you. We come asking you, Father God, to continue to lead us and guide us in a way that we should go. Yeah. We ask you, Father God, to look in on the sick, look in on the bereaved, and look in on the incarcerated. For Father God, there's someone truly there that needs you, dear Lord. May be lost and don't know which way to turn. But we ask you to be the powerful God that you are, Father God, and touch them in the way that we know you can. We ask you, Father God, for safe travel up and down the nature highway, Father God. For those that are on their way, Father God, and we thank you for those that have made it, dear Lord. We ask you, Father God, to just touch your world, dear Lord. Let them know that you are powerful. Let them know that you are the God that they need, dear Lord. We ask you to be with our leaders all across the land. Give them what they need to lead their people in the right direction. We ask you, Father God, to touch the path that you have put over here to lead us, Father God. Continue to build him up that he may build us up to be where we need to be for you, Lord. And we just thank you. We thank you for all the many blessings, future and past, dear Lord. We ask you to forgive us for all our misdoing, all our sins, dear Lord. All the ones that we do know and the ones that we don't know, dear Lord. And we just thank you. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> our devotional reading is coming from Psalms 30. <clears throat> Verse 1, 3, I will exalt thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up, and hast not made me foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cry unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave, thou hast kept me alive, that I shall not go down to the pits. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints, of his and give thanks at the remem remembrance of his holiness for his anger endureth but for a moment in his favor his life we may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning and in my prophecy i said i shall never be moved lord by the favor thou hast made my mountain to stand strong Thus do it hide my face, and I will tremble. I cry to thee, O Lord, and unto the Lord I make supplication. What profit is there to my blood when I go down to the pit? Shall it thus praise thee? Shall it declare thy truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. Lord, be thou my helper. Thus have turned me Thus has turned for me my mourners into dancing. Thus has put off my sockcloth and greeted, greeted me with gladness. To the end that my glory may sing praises unto thee and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks unto thee forever. Amen. Amen. And at this time, we have Brother Frank. Good morning, Jackson Chapel. Good morning. And to 
to all of you may, that may be viewing via Facebook or by other means. We welcome you to our Sunday school session of our worship service. We're still in our spring quarter. Our devotional reading was Psalm 30, background scripture, John 21, 1 through 14. And our printed passage today will be coming from John 21, verses 1 through 14. Our subject today is Friends, Food, and Fellowship. Coming from John, the book of John, the Gospel of St. John. Key verse, Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. John 21, verse 12. Food, friend, and fellowship. Our subject in our Sunday school commentary is Jesus Cook Breakfast. So those are the two topics we will be dealing with. Friends, food, and fellowship. Let me read verse 1 and then we will do an introduction. Uh, Brother Floyd always tell me in case of Why you mad when you cut that grass? I cut grass all day yesterday. Boy, I can tell my signs. So I pray that I'll make it through this lesson. Uh, verse 1 in our lesson says, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. So after these things, and so what are we talking about? After what things? After what transpired in John chapter 20? After those things, after the women <clears throat> went to the tomb and the tomb was empty and Mary Magdalene stood out there crying and they went back and told the disciples and Peter said, I'm going to go see for myself because they came in and believe y'all women. And Peter and ran to the tomb, and John ran there, and I ran Peter to the tomb. And they looked inside, and they saw that the clothes were there, and they said, well, I can't put them women were saying was true. And they went back, and they met with the other group, and lo and behold, Jesus appeared in the midst of them, <clears throat> for they was in a room locked, the door shut, and Jesus appeared in the midst of them, and talked with them. And one of them was not there, whose name was Thomas. And after eight days, they was had a meeting again. And I want to say after eight days, they met on a Sunday. And after eight days, it was Sunday again. That's why we get Sunday worship from. They, the, the disciples had started meeting on the resurrection day. So we call it Resurrection Sunday. So after eight days, they were meeting again. That first meeting, they, Thomas wasn't there. And they told Thomas what had happened. I'm like, I don't believe it. Only way I don't believe it, I had to put my hand in the air. So, the second occasion, Jesus was there. Jesus appeared to them while they were meeting, and Thomas was there. And he told Thomas, put your hand in. And Thomas believed. So he said, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. That reference to all of us. We didn't see the resurrection, we wasn't there. But if we believe, because it was recorded in the gospel. So all we got to go by, the just shall live by faith. So it was after those things that has transpired. They didn't, can I pick on you for a minute? Uh, find Matthew <clears throat> chapter 26, verse 31 and 37. Thank you. Can I pick on you for a minute? I want you to read that when I get to Matthew chapter 26, verse 31. 1 and 32. And where did go? I'll read one myself. Okay. So it was after these things he showed himself to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. Now, the Sea of Tiberias is the same as the Sea of Galilee. So they named it this. Sea of Tiberias said the Sea of Tiberias is another name for the body of water commonly called the Sea of Galilee. The city of Tiberias was constructed by Herod Antipas in honor of Emperor Tiberius. 
So that's why they named it the Sea of Tiberias. Okay. That was around A.D. 20. In Matthew's Gospel, this meeting that's taking place, today's lesson, is going to be, it was in the mountains, the setting of the Great Commission. In John's setting, what we've been dealing with today, they're meeting at the Sea of Tiberias. Now, there were, these are the peoples that were, seven disciples were in this meeting. Okay. Uh, and they start out with Peter. And every time you start listening to these disciples, the first one on the list is going to be Peter. Peter is the spokesman, kind of like of the group, Brother Floyd. He's kind of like uh, a leader. Of, he will be, but he was he's the spokesman of the group. So it always started out with Peter. And then there was Thomas, called Didymus. Thomas, we just referenced him. Uh, Thomas was the one who doubted. Oh, no, they're not saying. But they said there was something else about Thomas. When Lazarus died, uh, uh, Jesus said, well, I'm going to go seek my brother, my family. And uh, they said, you, you go in there, you know those people are going to kill you. And Thomas said, hey, we're going to go on with him and we'll die with him. So they said, well, he may have doubted, but he was bold. Thomas was. That was one. Then it said Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee. Nathaniel is only named by John. The other gospels don't even name Nathaniel. They call they name Bartholomew, and they said these may be two one of the same. All right, Nathaniel. Nathaniel was one of Jesus' early followers. Okay, John one forty five said Philip findeth Nathaniel, and saith unto him, We have found him, whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write. So John uses Nathaniel. But you won't find Nathan in the other gospel. The other gospel writers use Bartholomew. All right. And then there were the sons of Zebedee. So they didn't, didn't name these because, and that was James and John. So John leaving names out of John. And out of John's gospel, John never named himself. He was used to phrase the one whom Jesus loved. Or something like that. He don't, he don't name himself. And then there was two other disciples. Now when we add all these disciples up, we come into seven. So there are seven disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. Now, Nadine, I need you to read that verse for me. That's the reason why. 31 to 32. Mm -hmm. Then said Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. But after I am risen again, I will go before you to Galilee. Okay. The last part, she said, but after I am risen again, I will go before you into where? Galilee. Galilee. Mark 16 and 7 says, but go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter, this is an angel telling them, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There you shall see him as he said unto you. So that's a reference again. Go. Uh, Jesus done showed himself a couple of times and he done left some instruction. He telling them to go. And that runs me into verse 3, which says, Simon Peter says unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, well, we going with you. Uh, now why I had you to read those verses, Nadine, was he kept telling them, I'm going, I want to, I'm going to meet y'all in Galilee. Now, they are in Galilee, and Jeff, they are at the Sea of Tiberias. Okay? All that. For a while. They, they're where they're supposed to be. But the question is, were well, they supposed to be fishing? <laughs> <laughs> instruction of where to go. He said, after I am risen, they then said, you smite the shepherd, the sheep are going to be scattered. And all that. But I'm going to meet y'all in Galilee. And then Mark said, he's coming. He wants y'all to go into Galilee. So, so they are in the right place. They are in Galilee. But now, I don't know about this fishing thing. Uh, Simon Peter said, 
I'm going fishing. They said unto him, we done with you. Now, <clears throat> the Lord had instructed his disciples to meet him in Galilee, which helps to explain why they was at the Sea of Galilee to hear him. But, John did not explain why Peter decided to go fishing. And Bible students are not in agreement in their suggestions. Some claim that he was perfectly within his rights. Now, it's okay to go fishing. He, he's in his right. But some argue that Peter was wrong. Now, I, I, I just figured out posing to the class. What, what do y'all say? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Some claim, now this is just some, that he was perfectly within his rights because Peter was married and Peter needed to pay bills. So Jesus told him to go and he's going to meet him in Galilee, but some was suggesting that he didn't tell him what to do while they were waiting. So Peter said, Huh, oh, I'm going fishing. Ah, that's his own profession. Some of us. Uh, when things ain't going our way, and okay, we want to turn and go back. That's why some students are. Some I know. He, he, he. Now, why they said it is because the women, when Jesus was on his mission, there were some women with him. And they actually provided for their needs. Now they are saying that Jesus is gone. We got to fend for ourselves. So Peter said, I'm going fishing. <clears throat> now, let me bring this in. And where's my notes over there? I, I'm going to bring that in just a little bit later. Because in Luke chapter 5, I believe, verse 1 through 11, they was fishing again. And this is coming up in this lesson. In Luke 5, 1 through 11, they caught nothing. And so they were out there cleaning their nets and cleaning up everything. And Jesus walks up and said, Hey, let me use your ship. And he walked out on the boat. They were cleaning their nets up real well. And he preached to the people. And after he got through teaching and all that, he told Peter, Hey, launch out in the deep. Catching that. Peter said, Man, we've been fishing all night. We ain't caught nothing. <laughs> but that's your word. And he went out there and launched his little ship out. And they caught so many fish that that ship wasn't holding. He had to call his brother, partners in, and they loaded up that ship, and the ship was about to sink. All right, the net break and all that. And, and, and Peter fell on his knees and started to worship. He said, this, has, this got to be God. Anybody can do that kind of stuff. But what happened is when they got back to the bank, why? They left, it said, the trip said they forsook all. And they went with Jesus. So in Luke chapter 5, they left their depths, they left their boats, and they went and followed Jesus. But now, I'm going fishing. He said, they forsook it out. Well, he's picking his old trade back up. Well, my brother Robert, I thought about me and, me and brother Robert, we, we out cutting grass, and, and, and Jesus come by and, and preach to us, and we throw them long miles away, and we just start following Jesus. Yeah. But then, lo and behold, they done crucified Jesus on the cross. And then he done appeared a couple of times. They still kind of wonder. And then why he told us to go wait somewhere. We go, I don't know about this. I'm going to get my lawn mower. <laughs> so, we go back. We're going back and fend for ourselves. Okay. The, the question was, and a lot of, we, we try to debate everything. But why did they go fishing? Uh -huh. hmm. And they're really not a definite answer that we can find there. But those are just some suggestions that it may be the reason why <clears throat> they went fishing. It said there are several theories concerning this fishing trip. One, it was a relaxing trip to pass time until Jesus appointed me. Number two, it was for the purpose of making money. Uh, three, it was 
a reinstigation of Peter's fishing vocation. That's what we said. He just, I'm going back to fishing. I'm finna pick up my own. And you know, when things start, start going wrong, Diane and I like, sometimes we want to go back to our old profession. Sometimes when AK gets on my nerves and all that, I said, I think I'll go back and have a beer. <laughs> okay, I can't go back into that old profession. All right, so we have to move on. So that's food for thought. You can think about that. Wonder why he go fishing? Okay. There's no definite answer here. John didn't give us a definite answer why Peter started to go fishing. And then it says one more point. If it was wrong for him to go fishing, there were six others following him. He said it's bad when you ain't. Now I told y'all that they name Peter first every time when you get through these names. Peter's going to come first. It's bad that if you're in leadership position and then you lead other people's wrong, wrong. Me and Robert pick back up our lawnmower. We go out there and tell everybody else in church that more. Hey, y'all, you better get your lawnmower. Jesus dead and gone. No. Okay. Well, so that's food for thought. So Simon said, I'm going fishing. They said unto him, We are going with you. Now, then they went forth and entered into a ship. Immediately, and that night they caught nothing. Mm. They fish at night. Fishermen said they a lot of times they fish at night when it was cool on I got to ask Bertha, did Bertha, did you fish at night? I know I'm not going to fish at night because when I did go fishing, the little snake just kept popping his head up over there, and I said, like, uh. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't fish for hitting that snake down in the spring creek. But, uh, they fished at night. They said it was cooler at night and the fishes would come up and feed. In the heat of the day, the fishes would go out into the deep water. And so if you're using nets, it's hard to drop your nets low enough to catch fish. So they would fish at night. So it, at night, but they caught nothing. They was tired, they were weary, they were hungry, and they caught Nothing. That's the story of my life for fishing, Diane. I, I, I told the guy that worked when I retired, I'm fishing. But the whole time I fished before I retired, I couldn't ever catch nothing that cake. I catch a little grill when it's about that size. I ain't never caught a big fish. So we have to go back to work and we have to tell lies about the big fish we caught. <laughs> <laughs> the, fish, oh. the fish had a light on it. Yeah. Catch them and take the light out. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody at work had fish stories. We're leading, John is leading us into one. <laughs> I, I, I never had luck fishing. But in one thing I did learn, I learned patience and I learned quietness. And you had time, you could think. Even though you weren't catching fish, you had time to reflect on different things in life. But that's, that's, that's a good thing about it. So they caught. Nothing. Going back to, now, why were they fishing in there? Have you ever wondered when things just start going wrong and, and they just keep going wrong? And he said, then I wonder what I have done to make this race so hard to run. Then I say to my soul, don't worry, the Lord will make a way somehow. I'm talking about me when when, when things just keep going wrong, then I ask the question, am I doing something wrong? They toil all night, and these are experienced fishermen, and they caught nothing. Yeah, that's something to think about. Maybe they wasn't where they supposed to be. I don't know. I'll leave that alone. Hey, then you all just have something to say about that. <laughs> Maybe. <clears throat> Verse 4. But when morning was now come, Jesus stood on the other shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. All night, no fish. Now it's morning. Jesus standing on the shore, but they knew not that it was Jesus. 
Mary Magdalene at the tomb didn't know, didn't recognize him. The disciple on the road to Emmaus didn't recognize him immediately. These people had trouble recognizing Jesus. But on this occasion, he said there are several theories as to why maybe they didn't. For one, maybe on this occasion here, maybe it was too dark because he was on the shore. It's morning, but maybe the sun had just ready to come up. Number two, maybe he was too far away for them to recognize him. Or uh, maybe they were just tired and wore out and they know who that guy was standing on the bank. Uh, Jesus may have looked different. Uh, and number five, they were divinely prevented from recognizing him. In the other Gospels, Luke said, their eyes were holding that they should not know him. So they was prevented from recognizing him until Jesus got his point over. So they was prevented. Their eyes was holding. They, they couldn't recognize him. So it may have been divine intervention. All right. Also, it has something to do with his resurrected body. And I see it, maybe that's give us an idea of what our bodies would be like. And I knew the sign was going to get cranked up in a minute. <coughs> but they didn't know who he was. Verse 4. Verse 5. <coughs> Jesus said unto the children, Have you any meat? They answered him, No. Now when he said, Have you any meat? It's referencing to fish. And if it, any other time they used the word meat, he's talking about food. So have you any food? Have you any fish? They answered him, No. Sometimes when we answer, ask a question, we already know the answer. We already know what the answer you should give. Or sometimes we are being tested to see if we're going to give the right answer. But do you have, Jesus knew they didn't have it. He called them cheers. This is a term of endearment. He wasn't trying to condemn them or anything. He just saying, speaking as a master teacher. Uh, they are his students, and he used the phrase, children, have you any meat? And they answered him, no. This lesson is straightforward, so I'm, I'm just running home through it today. Ain't a whole lot we can argue about. Uh, <clears throat> we may still argue about why they are out there, Robert, but do you have any food? They don't work all night. No. Six, he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find. <coughs> they therefore, they cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Now we come up on them, Brother Floyd, we come up on them fishing stories now. <laughs> They ain't caught nothing all night. No fish. We won't have no food. Jesus had cast it on the right side. <clears throat> and they cast therefore, and they were not able to draw in the multitude. Now I said these two incidents are similar. The one happened in Luke 5 and the one that happened here. In Luke 5, they caught so many it broke the nets. And the boat was about to sink. Here, the nets didn't break, but they got a multitude of fish. Cast it on the right side. Here go Brother Wyatt, he's going to take that and run with it. Because the right side, he's going to go write books on how to fish, and how to catch fish, and how to catch your nets on the, on the right side. 
One author said, I have been unable to find any evidence which indicates which side of the boat was normally used by fishermen on the Sea of Galilee. <clears throat> was there any logical reasoning that came by catching the nets on the right side? You know, inquiring mind just want to know everything. <laughs> when I'm reading one, I'll be, I'll be thinking that stuff too. Uh, he said, go out and catch it on the right side. So, uh, somebody will come back and tell everybody how to catch fish. And what side of the boat you ought to fish up in order to catch fish. There is no need to seek symbolical meaning for the right and left side. The difference is not between the right and the left, but between working with and without divine guidance. So, uh, they had divine guidance to cast on the right side. When they were out fishing, they were on their own. So if we would listen, uh, we may be productive also. But as far as the right side of the boat or the left side, that, that's not what we should be focused on. But they had these instructions from God. And that we are going to be successful when we follow his instruction. <clears throat> so, tell Bertha, it don't make no difference what side of the boat. Okay. Now, seven. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved says unto Peter, it is the Lord. When they caught all those fish, now remember Luke said they caught two boats full of fish and Peter just fell at his feet and began to worship him. All right. And when they got back to bank, they left their nets, they left their boats and they went and followed Jesus. In this occasion, they caught a big catch of fish again. And maybe it clicked in John's mind. Hey, I remember another occasion when this happened. And he was looking at a guy over there on the bank. He said, That's the Lord. Yeah. Ain't nobody can do this but come. So that, that may be his frame. Of thinking that disciple whom Jesus loved, we identify him as it is John. He says to Peter, It's the Lord. And Peter may have reflected also, Yeah, uh, I remember that other incident <clears throat> when we caught all those fish. So now they recognize him as being the Lord. It is the Lord. It said that Peter and John went to the empty tomb and John outran Peter and John recognized that Jesus had risen before Peter. <clears throat> On this occasion, John recognized Jesus again before Peter. Now I tell you, every time you mention the list of disciples is going to list Peter first. Mm -hmm. But John Gospel keep putting John out doing Peter first. But now in the verses coming up, we're going to see how Peter's going to take the lead. You know, John recognized that John tells Peter, look what Peter did. 7b. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fish's coat unto him, for he was naked. And he did cast himself into the sea. And John told him, it's the Lord. And Peter said, it sure is. They, they out there in the water. They looking on the bank. And they said, Peter was naked. Now, I ain't can't put that reference to him. <laughs> was he in his birthday suit? <laughs> um, he doesn't have a shirt on. He doesn't have a shirt on. Yeah. It, so they dress lightly when they're out there fishing. Because sometimes they have to jump in the water and do all that stuff. And so... He, he, uh, so he got his coat. Yeah. 
He was. He probably dressed like Aunt Kate when Aunt Kate go to Florida on vacation all the time down on the beach. So he probably dressed like, <laughs> dressed like that, kind of skimpy. But he, he, he <laughs> okay. But he girt his fish's coat unto him, for he was naked. Is what it said. He was light in the clay. All right. Now he did this for a purpose. It said that. He didn't want to show disrespect to the master teacher. Now they have identified him as being the law. So he said, he threw the coat on him. Peter jumped in the water. I bet John will be in this thing. John's in the boat. And they got a whole lot of fish. And Peter, Peter jumped in the water. He hit his swimming. Hmm. It, it said that he, he, he put the coat on. Let me play with that a minute. Didn't want to show disrespect. I, I looked at one reference over in Exodus. Moses was writing the laws. He said, Neither shall thou go up by steps unto mine altar. This one, Pastor. Uh, yeah. Moses wrote it. <laughs> Don't go up unto mine altar of steps that thy nakedness may not be discovered. Their own. So, <clears throat> so the, the, the priest and thing that they're going up steps to the altar, so you got to be careful. What well, they're saying is dress. So, some of the commentaries got off on dress here. Uh, you know, how we should dress. Well, we, we dress up for any, all other engagement, for proms and weddings and all this. But when we come to church, they say, oh, you come as you are. We can do it for all those other things, and why don't you come? Well, I, I say, well, that ain't what this verse is getting us into, but we should dress modestly. Huh? Uh, and and, and ain't Kate, y'all got on dressing thing, and we having a baptism. Don't go up them stairs back there. Because Robert and some more be looking. Okay. Well, don't go up them stairs. Oh, I right, just food for thought. But we should dress modestly. And they wanted to, Peter wanted to present himself modestly before his teacher. That's what he said. So Peter heard that it was the Lord. He girt his fish's coat unto him, for he was naked and did cast himself into the sea. Any comment on dress? Okay. Yeah, I, I do think that we hinder some people when we we start getting too far in the dress coat. Uh, me and Robert and Wyatt and all us a lot of time. We have a men's day of engagement and all that. What color? Russell. I said, what color are we going to wear? And then they come out. On women's day, y'all come out with some of the all these colors. I'm sorry, you know, but I can't even determine what, what color is that. You know? <laughs> but they come up to me and I was like, tell y'all one thing. Y'all get too far out there, you count me out because I'm just going to wear what I got. But then again, some, some people are not able to go out and buy all of this stuff that you want also, you know, no, that's no excuse. Dress modest. That, that, that's all I'm saying. Be modest. So let me, let me get away from that because that ain't what that was about, dress. But I, I read a lot of commentaries and they brought the dress in because Peter dressed himself and he wanted to present himself modest. Okay, verse 8. <clears throat> Why? Well, Peter about on the shore now. He done wrapped that stuff around him. And that guy was swimming. I bet John ain't going to beat me this time. <laughs> John is first and then like himself, Peter. Verse 8. And the other disciples came in a little ship. For they were not far from land. But as it was 200 cubits, dragging the net with fishes. Now, the little ships came. 200 cubits. Said it was about 300 feet. I don't know, Pastor, that's here in the library over there somewhere. About 300 feet. Yeah, across the street over there. Or somewhere. Hmm. I remember the reason why they couldn't. Yeah, so he's. And they were dragging the nets. Peter left all the work to them. Peter just swam the show. I'm going to get me a view of this. This guy. Peter's already there. Verse 9, 8. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire. Of coals there. They done made it to shore now. 
And when the disciples came to the shore, including a wet pier, they noticed that the resurrected Jesus was still an humble servant. Now, Jesus on one occasion washed their feet. Jesus on this occasion has prepared breakfast for them. What I'm about to say it makes no difference if you have a position in church or you hold a position. You're not, that position is not for you to be served. That position is for you to serve. So we're in position to serve, not to be served. Jesus is the master teacher. He is the master. So they looked at him as rabbi, for he had, and yet he, every time you find him, he is serving. So just because you're a president of the choir and all that, that don't mean nothing, but that more is required of you. If you're on the steward board, you're on the stewardess board, it just means that there's more service for you to do. So Jesus has prepared food for them. Notice it said they saw a fire of coal there. I want to reference one thing here. When they saw the fire of coal, it probably dawned on Peter the last time he was standing by some fire of coal, it was when he was denying Jesus. And he denied him three times. And he said, I don't know the man before the cock crowed. Uh, he was at a woman himself by a fire. And now, here he is again, warming himself by a fire with the resurrected Jesus. But this time, he will be affirmed. The other time, he rejected Christ. This time, in the verses not in our lesson, he's going to be reinstated, really, into the fellowship. Uh, he was never cast out, but he figured he was because of what he had done. So Jesus is going to affirm him this time back. So he's standing by the fire of coals there. And fish laid there on and bread. Said so the presence of fish and bread likely evoked memories among the disciples of when Jesus converted five loaves and two fishes into a filling lunch for 5,000. So Jesus had fish and bread. There was Jesus. There was the bread. And there was the fish. And it needed no further explanation. This is the Lord. Question. Inquiring mind want to know where did Jesus get those fish from? <laughs> I don't know. That was just a question I was asked. So I, said, oh, I guess I asked too. Hey, Kate, where did he get that fish from? <laughs> you know? hmm. Maybe he wasn't bothered, but anyhow, Jesus had breakfast prepared for him. He fed 5,000 with two little fish and five barley loaves. So those two little fish, Jeff, fed all those people. Where did he get all that fish from? <laughs> and Abernathy, she came in here Wednesday, she was telling us some stuff and they and said, don't kids ask some questions? And, Brother Frank, I don't have to ask for some of them questions. How did God do this? And how did God? I said, well, sometimes you don't have to tell me God. <laughs> <You're not. laughs> he can do what he wants to do. Where did he get these fish from? He's God. I can't tell you how, but you know, he is God. That's what he did. So he had fish and bread ready for them on the shore. Hmm. 10 and 11. Jesus said unto them, Bring the fish which you have caught. Simon Peter went up, drew the net to the land full of fishes, 153, for all there, and for all there were so many, yet was the net, not the net broken. Jesus has fish prepared. He has bread prepared. Then he tells them, bring up the fish that y'all caught. Here goes Peter again. Peter, 
Peter, Peter liked to be free, Robert. He, we can't like Robert. You know, <laughs> he, said, he told them to bring up, not even got that big thing, and Peter run and drag all the fish by himself. So, you know, they just, <laughs> look, look what it says. Bring the fish that you caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the nets to the land full of great fishes. He went and dragged the old fishes. And it, now notice, it said great fishes. Bro, Floyd, it wasn't the little thing that I would catch. These, these were great fish that he caught. A hundred and fifty and three. For they were so many. Peter, Peter left the disciples out on the boat to drag them to shore. But when Jesus said, bring me some of y'all, Peter ran and crapped on the and he, he, he drug them in there. Now I was like, wonder why he want that fish. He already had fish. Maybe he didn't have enough. He wanted to mix theirs in too, you know, with, with what he had. But yeah, they, they had a fellowship meal. If nothing wrong, I used to say, Reverend Bankhead, that we had to eat too much at church. <laughs> Every time you turn around, you got to eat, eat, eat. But there's nothing wrong with a fellowship meal. Yeah. If, if for the right reason, you, we should fellowship one with another. And Jesus will often eat with his disciples. So there's nothing wrong with it. I just say we just eat too much. You know, but <clears throat> that's just me. Fish. Now, one more question. Inquiring minds always want to know they name. How come how can, how can they name 153? <laughs> that's a, they drew the nets full of fishes 153. For all there were many. Yet the nets didn't break. In Luke chapter 5, we started out with it. The nets broke and the boats almost sunk. Here, they had a great catch and the nets didn't break. And they count, it's 153. That's what I, now I said, tell Bertha, it don't make no difference what side the boat you're fishing off of. You need to buy an instruction. But here, another one we want to know, well, how come, how come they named the 153? Hmm. It says some ancient writers, such as Jerome, believe there were 153 types of fish in the world, and this catch represented a full harvest of the entire world. I said, you can believe that if you want to, <laughs> but well, that's what they said. <clears throat> some said that they thought 100 stood for the Gentiles, 50 stood for Israel, and 3 stood for the Trinity, which is 153. Now you can take that if you want to. The truth is that we all know for certain that it is 153, that the 153 represent the fish that's in the net. And John didn't tell us anything else, so we all believe it at that. <laughs> but but we, want to, we want to add all this stuff. But it was 153 fishes. In the net, what it represent? Well, we might all. You can say that, but don't make it the gospel. I put it that way. Uh, that, that, that's not the gospel. It said that when you are fishing with a group at these professional work, when you caught fish, when you came back to shore or while it was on the boat, you and can you count the fish? And you see how many you had. How many was out there? It was seven. Fish. You count the catch. You see how much you have and you divide it equally among the people who are fishing. That, that's why the count is necessary. Or when they get back to shore, if they're going to sell them to market, they need to know how many they got that they are going to sell to market. So they count the fish. If nothing mysterious or hidden or biblical about the number 153. John just included the number to tell us that it was a great catch. And they were not little fish. Great fish. You got that? But don't write a book on that either way. You write a book on right side and left side of the boat is the best side to fish from, then we write a book. Okay. Great catch. <clears throat> Now, we about done. Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. 
And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. He said, They fought their fish, Jesus. Now come on and, and, and let's fellowship together. Let's have a meal. It wasn't the same as the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, but this is a fellowship meal. You know, that Jesus is getting his disciples ready to take his place, really. Uh, he's not going to be him much longer with them. And so he's having a fellowship meal, and they will receive some instruction, and Peter's going to be reinstituted, and the verse is not in the lesson, and, and Peter's going to feel better about himself. You know, that, that's what he is. So sometimes, uh, sometimes we just ought to have a fellowship meal <coughs> with us. You know, most times we got another, it's Women's Day, it's Men's Day, we got somebody else coming. Sometimes we might all just have a Jackson Chapel fellowship, a get together of just us. Yeah. And, and just, if there are any grievances or anything, and if somebody just need to hug somebody and say, I love you anyway, get it up to you. <clears throat> Uh, coming down. But they didn't ask him anything about who art thou. It's still a reference to it. It's something that is different about it. If something is different, we don't know what, but they knew it was the Lord. It said, not one of the disciples ventured to interrogate him. They wouldn't go into any deep, hey, what happened really? And when you was in that grave, they didn't interrogate him. They didn't examine him. Each man felt convinced that this was the Lord. And a new reverence prevented them from questioning him. They just reverenced him as the Lord. And they questioned him no further. 13. Jesus then coming. He take his bread and give them and fish likewise. <clears throat> and every time Jesus had a meal with them, if there was any doubt, when they had a meal with Jesus, then they knew it was him. Even the guys on the road to Emmaus, when they had Jesus, they prepared a meal and Jesus served, <clears throat> then their eyes were open and they knew. It was the Lord. The emphasis is on Jesus' presence and sharing the life that is signified in the sharing of a meal. <clears throat> okay. And now we're at the end. Verse 14. This is the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. Like I said, this lesson was just straightforward. A fishing trip that turned bad, that turned good. And John said, this is the third time. Now, there are more appearances of Jesus, but this is the third time, according to John's gospel, that he had appeared. Right. Now, you get into Luke and some of the other ones, there, there was more appearances. Uh, but this is the third time Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Uh, and I leave it right there. There any questions are coming on this vision of the truth. No question, no question. You have to know what you're doing if you care. You have to know what you're doing. So, so you can't hurt it. My hands are bloody and everything else. You kick him by the head, the neck, you paralyze him. I didn't know that. I just gonna grab him like that. Mm -hmm. And kick my hands bloody. Fiends. Mm -hmm. I asked my wife, what are you doing? She said, you gotta know how to grab him. I said, how you grab him? Y'all see, I don't care how much they wiggle. You kick him by the head. You squeeze. That'll paralyze him. I didn't know that. You trying to say sometimes the fish are have more knowledge. Any, than chair, any <laughs> side, any side, you get your hands around the neck, squeeze them, and paralyze them. 
Uh, that, that's one of them fishing stories, okay? <laughs> that, that, uh, they, will, they will hurt you. I've been fanned by the song myself. But that mine, again, mine was so little. <laughs> but be prayerful in anything you do. They went fishing. I don't know if they prayerfully thought that out. Now, and I got to end here, but he's going to tell them again that now I'm fixing to go away. But I want y'all to wait in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And I may be getting ahead in the lesson. I don't know. But they went into an upper room and they fasted and prayed and they waited because Jesus said, I'm going to send you something back. And they waited there until the Holy Ghost came. Now, he told them in this lesson, go to Galilee. I'm going to meet you out there. Maybe they should have been fasting and praying rather than fishing. And maybe. The Bible didn't tell us that. That's just me. But they was out fishing and Jesus had a fellowship meal with them. And I'm going to leave right there. Just be prayerful in everything you do. Thank you. I'm going to turn it back over to Superintendent. Good morning again. Uh, friends, food, and fellowship. Relaxing time catching fish. Uh, the thing is I, that I got out of that is uh, to fellowship because you never know when it's your last time to fellowship with everybody that you love. Yeah, you know, tomorrow is not promised. But God was going back. He was going home. Jesus was going home with God. So he was trying to get their mindset ready to be prepared for whatever was coming their way. Like Brother Frank said, I'm going to open the lesson the next week or the week the next lesson. He tell them that he gave specific instruction to be here and wait. But on this day, he told them to meet him in Galilee. You know, but we still got to have a mindset of being in God's word and knowing what he really wants us to do. Like I said in the book, it don't say he tell them not to go fishing, but he didn't say to go fishing. <laughs> <laughs> So we can read into that a whole different way, a whole lot different way. So at this time, uh, are there any announcements? No announcements, so just by here for a moment, right? Dear Lord, first of all, we thank you for this lesson. We thank you, Father God, for just being God and God by yourself. We ask you, Father God, to continue and lead us in the way that we should go. We ask you that you will open up, open up our heart and our mind and we can see that word for the truth, Father God. We, we just thank you, Father God, for giving it the way that it is. We thank you, Father God, for everyone that is here. We ask you to be with those that are on their way. We ask you to bless the pastor that you have put over here to lead us. And we thank you for all you have done. And most of all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Amen.